Hello there. My name is Wanjama. I am from Seed Savers Network in Kenya. I am currently in Girgil, and in Girgil is where we have our seed learning center. And the Seed Savers Network in Kenya is a network of over 8,000 farmers and activists who are advocating for farmers' rights to save, share, and exchange seeds. And one of the biggest challenge is exactly that. And we are not just talking, but we take action. And my colleague, uh, Tabi, is going to tell you how we have taken action on this front. Yes, thank you so much, Anjama. Uh, we are taking uh, so many steps uh, to advocate for farmers' rights. And uh, some of some of these are around advocating for a change in the seed laws. But apart from this, farmers from the Seed Savers Network, with support from the Seed Savers Network, have gone to court to seek for a constitutional interpretation of the Constitution and the Seed and Plant Varieties Act. This is because the Constitution provides for, for communities to go, around, to go about uh, their culture, which which includes exchange of seeds, but then the Seed and Plant Varieties Act limits this exchange of seeds and therefore we have gone to court so that uh, we are able to get a constitutional interpretation of, uh, of these provisions in the Constitution. Apart from seed activism, Seed Savers Network has established a training center that trains so many people, like every week we have about 30 people staying for three days uh, in our accommodation and uh, training hall and conducting various practical activities in our field and training garden. Part of the program that we take farmers through when they come to Seed Savers Network is on food forest which is always handled by Dominic who is going to explain to you. So this is the food forest that farmers are trained. You can see there are several varieties of trees and uh, the idea is that uh, the families are able to harvest uh, from uh, January to December without necessarily having to plant anything and uh, this is this creates an ecosystem that is sustainable and uh, it creates even habitats for, for birds which is very important in terms of uh, ensuring that the the communities are able to have um, a food and nutritional security. And inside the food forest, we have what we call the, the soils. As you can see where I'm, I'm inside, that is very useful in terms of uh, harvesting water. And um, uh, this is one of the technologies that uh, farmers in uh, dry areas are supposed to embrace. So that uh, uh, when it rains, for instance, now it's raining, the water can just uh, go inside the soil slowly and uh, they're able to sustain their crop. To avoid use of chemical fertilizers, we train farmers and also ourselves, we make our own compost and liquid manure and ester and internet seed savers like handling this part. Yes, here at Seed Savers, we have a vermi compost over here where we tend to have the worms which help in like reducing the kitchen refuse into a beneficial fertilizer and with them here they after we feed them and also fill the water we have the vermit tea here which is collected here and this one can be used in the farms and it's very beneficial because it enriches soil the other problem we face in farmers' right is that farmers' varieties can be documented, characterized by private sector, and the private sector are they able to obtain intellectual property rights on farmers' varieties and own them and exclude farmers from owning them. And therefore, we have a program where we characterize them, and Dalmas normally is the one who help us in doing that and also empowering farmers to be able to characterize their varieties. Uh, um, currently, uh, we are doing characterization of um, uh, 70 accessions of varieties of crops. Uh, 
within Nakuru County and uh, here we have uh, some few uh, beans, bean varieties, we have 16 uh, varieties here and also we are working with farmers uh, to document more. Like I said we have documented 70 and we hope to do uh, 100 more at this season. Yeah, we are also supporting farmers uh, to create a community of uh, farmers breeders and um, currently we are also doing a breeding in uh, tomatoes with cherry and also some other uh, few indigenous varieties. We harvest all our seeds from our seed bank, from our field and we bring them to Amboi who is a custodian of the seeds and also the caretaker of our seed bank. Welcome Amboi. Thank you. So I'm going to take you through the seed bank and the processes that we do in our seed bank. So we have a culture. Uh, before we come into the seed bank, we usually stand here and do a moment of silence to remember all the seeds that we have lost in the past uh, as a way of uh, showing the work that we, we are doing to continue saving these seeds. After the seeds have come into the seed bank, they go through various processes, which one of them is to test the viability of the seed. Like here we test the viability through germination testing. So we pick a container and uh, we use a paper towel. We can also use a cotton wool. Uh, we put water inside and select a few seeds, about 10 seeds for the uh, specific accession that you want to test. You put the 10 seeds here and you replicate that into four times. So you will have four of these containers with the same type of seeds. You leave them for some time and then after some time you usually come and do and calculate or evaluate the germination. So. After the seeds have passed the germination test, which is about 85%, they are now qualified to go to the inside the seed bank. So after we have done the germination test and we realize they, they are above 85% germination, then the other thing that we test is the moisture. So we use this moisture meter to test the moisture content. And if the seeds are have a moisture content of below 10 percent know that the seeds are good for storage after we test the moisture that now we know the seeds are dry enough they have good viability uh, now the other thing we do is to pack them so we use this vacuum sealer and we, we this vacuum sealer is able to suck out all the air and the seeds don't have any air inside so we use the aluminium foil papers like this one so this aluminium foil cannot allow any air inside. So after we vacuum seal the seeds using this uh, aluminium foil, we store the seeds in the freezer. So we have this freezer here and another freezer down there. So this freezer, uh, above here we have a temperature of about negative 23 degrees. This means that the seeds, because the seed is dry enough, the seed can stay here for up to uh, very many years. Here is where we put the seeds for the long term. Uh, so we have a freezer down here which, at, which has sub-zero temperatures, about negative 20 degrees. So in this freezer, this is where we keep the seeds for long term. These seeds can be there for up to 100 years. Apart from the long-term conservation that I have shown you in the freezers, we also have these seeds in these containers that we have here. These are the seeds which are regularly in exchange where farmers often will come for these seeds, regenerate and bring them back. So these ones are active in the seed banks when we don't keep them for long term. And the ones that you can see here in the display, they are also in small quantities and they, they show the display and the diversity that we have in the seed bank. Thank you, Jim, and the Seed as Common community. I wish I was also attending Cumberland Spring convening physically, but because I'm not there, I wish you all the best in this event, and I'm happy to have participated in this. Thank you inv for inviting Seed Savers Network in that event, and in solidarity, 